Hello, and welcome to Creating Recorded Presentations with VoiceThread. This is part of our Keep Teaching series of workshops that we're delivering to help NIU faculty transition their face-to-face -face courses to remote delivery. My name is Stephanie Richter. I'm the Director of Faculty Development and Instructional Support with the Faculty Development and Instructional Design Center here at Northern Illinois University. And I'm joined by two of my colleagues, Dan Cabrera, our Multimedia Coordinator. Dan, do you want to say hello? Hello, everyone. Ooh. Sorry about that. Sorry. <laughs> I surprised him with that. Uh, Dan, as our Multimedia Coordinator, uh, is a certified VoiceThread educator and able to assist with your, your voice thread creations. And then Rob, do you want to say hello as well? Yes, but this is the last time we're using that picture. Um, hello everyone, good afternoon. Hope you enjoy uh, <laughs> the uh, presentation. I love your bow tie, Rob. Um, <laughs> it's the hair that's the problem. Someone didn't tell me that, you know, it was a poof going on. So yeah, it, it's not the best look. <laughs> that's all right. Uh, Rob is also a certified voice thread educator and able to help you with any of your voice threads. He's been working with quite a few faculty across campus as they integrate voice thread in their teaching. First, I want to get started with talking a little bit about what VoiceThread is and what it can do. And then we will, I'll, Rob will actually share a sample of a video in VoiceThread, not a video. We'll share a sample of a VoiceThread. And then we'll also, I will walk through a demonstration of how you can get started with your very first recording. So first, a voice thread is an audiovisual presentation. The, um, there are a lot of things you can do with it, but today the way that I'm conceptualizing it is as a narrated presentation. So with voice thread, you can upload and share a, a PowerPoint presentation that you've already created, or a set of documents, a PDF, or um, some images, some photos that you have, things that you would have ordinarily shared or talked about in class, you can upload into VoiceThread and then add your audio over top of that to describe and discuss those with your students. So it becomes, in essence, a recorded lecture, uh, but you're able to do it quickly and, and discreetly per slide so that it makes it really easy for you to do this. And then VoiceThread is also an interactive platform. So by using your voice and by using your, uh, your media, you're creating a connection with your students that you might miss otherwise. But students can also comment themselves on VoiceThread presentations. And by doing so then, students can start to build community and stay connected to one another within uh, that virtual platform. One of the great things that we'll talk about with VoiceThread is that there are a variety of ways for you to add audio over your slides. That means that you don't have to have access to a webcam or access to a headset with a microphone. You can use your built-in microphone on your laptop. You can dial in via telephone, or you can even just type out comments as well. So you, for you and for your students, there are, there's a great deal of flexibility in how you interact with VoiceThread. That means that it's more readily available and more um, has a lower barrier to entry than other tools might that require more specific or sophisticated equipment. But that's a pretty abstract description. So I'm going to turn things over to Rob for a moment, who will be able to demonstrate what a voice thread looks like using an example that a faculty member has already created. OK. Thank you, Stephanie. So uh, to kind of give you a background, um, the RN to BS nursing program uses VoiceThread pretty extensively. And um, this is the instructor introduction um, that a faculty member uses. They also use it for every single module overview. So there's 11 courses in the program. And every single week on Sunday, they sit down and have their cup of coffee and, and basically talk to their uh, students for five or 10 minutes. So this is just a short example of an introduction. Uh, 
Welcome to Nursing 463. Um, I'm Jean Sterker Rydell. I'm going to be your instructor for the next eight weeks, and I guarantee the eight weeks will fly by. I know. Okay, so just a couple things I wanted to point out real quick so you can see the closed caption over to the left. It's automatic. Um, that's, uh, again, something that um, VoiceThread provides. And these are the number of people that have commented so far on it. Um, and what she also used this for was a platform to talk about her syllabus. So this is actually a slideshow. The first, the first slide was just a selfie, but typically in the module overviews, they do just a video session. Um, and then again, as you can see, she goes through every single part of her syllabus, um, basically to make sure that they know what the classroom policies are and the program policies. So that's just one example um, that we use at our NWS program. That's great. Thanks, Rob. Mm -hmm. Oh, it looks like we have a question. Uh, Jeannie, I am going to show you exactly <laughs> where you can find VoiceThread. So great question. And by the end, if you don't know the answer, ask me again, because I didn't do my job. <laughs> if you still wonder about that by the end of this. Let me get back to my slides. I have one quick overview I want to show you of how to, to think about creating your VoiceThread. So your VoiceThread has, creating a VoiceThread requires, in my mind, four steps. These are some of them are very small. Some of them require more time. But it's sort of the overall process that you'll go through. The first thing that you'll do, actually, is create a VoiceThread link in your Blackboard course. So for the question on where do I go to get to VoiceThread, the answer is in your Blackboard course. And you'll create the link. And then you tell the link what to do, essentially. <laughs> Once you've gone through that, you'll be able to create your VoiceThread by uploading your media or beginning to record with a webcam. And then when your slides are loaded or your, your presentation, your document are, are loaded, then you add your narration to VoiceThread. VoiceThread calls that a comment. And you can add your comments then for each page or each slide or each item of media that you've posted. Once you're done with that process, then you share it with your students. So it's a fairly straightforward uh, step that VoiceThread will walk you through. And I will demonstrate that for you at least once and possibly a second time if we need another go. So hold on just a moment while I transition to my application share. All right, so you can now see my uh, Chrome browser. And you can see that I'm in one of my Blackboard courses. I'm going to start by demonstrating this in Blackboard original course view. But the same process works in ultra course view with a slight change at the front for how you actually establish that link. Fortunately, once you have actually linked it and you're connected to VoiceThread, then the process is the same on the VoiceThread side. So in my Blackboard course, I've gone to one of my content areas here on the menu. I'm choosing content. So far, it's empty because I haven't been using Blackboard much in this demo course for this semester. VoiceThread is under Build Content. So when I go to Build, build Content, you'll see I have two options for VoiceThread graded or just a plain VoiceThread. If you're creating a presentation to share with your students, you likely just want the ungraded, the plain voice thread option. But I will describe the, the graded options at the end. So when I create, click to create voice thread, I'll first give it a name. I'm creating this as an introduction to evaluation. That'll be my topic for this week's lesson. I can give it a name. I can also give it a description. These are essentially the instructions to your students. So I'll say click the title above to view the presentation. And then click Submit. Now I have my link to VoiceThread. This isn't actually linked to anything yet, though. When I first create this link, it creates a placeholder to launch wherever I want VoiceThread to go. 
I tell VoiceThread how to treat this link when I click the link itself. It will launch the LTI. I will be told I'm directed to the application momentarily. This can take a few seconds depending on your internet speed and how VoiceThread's doing right then with how many people are using it. So then I get to the VoiceThread setup page. When you're creating a VoiceThread presentation for your students, you'll want to use the individual VoiceThread. The other two options allow you to link to other pages on VoiceThread, either for course view, a list of all of the presentations that are in your course, or home takes you to the VoiceThread home then. For right now, the only one I would worry about is individual VoiceThread. Now I'm actually inside VoiceThread inside of Blackboard. And I get the option first to either select an existing presentation that I've already created or to create a new one. Right now, we're walking through as though this were our first recording and we're going to create a new voice thread. From here, the first thing I need to do to create my voice thread now is to add media to it. So I'm going to click Add Media, and I'm going to focus on adding media from my computer, meaning I'm uploading a presentation or a PDF or some photos that I already have on my computer. It's worth noting as well, Rob mentioned that faculty have been using this to record introductions with their webcam where they just talk to their students. And for that, you would use this webcam video option. Let me use my computer. From here, I did my app share wrong because I'm a noob. So let me launch this one more time correctly. These things happen. There we go. Now you can see my file, and I can choose the file that I want to share. In this case, I'm going to share this definitions of evaluation and open that slides. Then I enter a title again. Yes, you already entered one in Blackboard, but this one is the VoiceThread title and the VoiceThread description. At this point, I'm only going to worry about the title and not the description or tags. There are playback options that you can explore, but for your first VoiceThread, you are perfectly fine with ignoring most of these. They have to do with how your students can comment on your presentation and how they interact with it. So from that, I will click Save. And you can see in the background here that VoiceThread is starting to process my presentation and bring in my slides. This will take more time if you have a longer presentation. I had a fairly simple five slide presentation for the purposes of our demonstration, and so that happened really quickly. If it does take longer, just wait and come back in a few minutes and it will be ready to go. At this point, now that I have my media added, I could choose to add more. So if I needed to add maybe a second presentation or I was switching from a presentation to a photo or to another document, I could add more media at this time as well. Christine, I see you asked, do you recommend splitting up the slides if you have a lot? Um, you know, you may want to try that if you've tried it once and it was unsuccessful. Otherwise, I've found that it does work with larger slide uh, sets, but it will just take longer. So just be prepared to wait, particularly if you have a presentation that has a large number of photos, because that makes it a larger file. Another thing you can try is converting, saving your presentation as a PDF. Um, VoiceThread recommends this if you have some complex uh, formatting in your presentation, because when you save it as PDF, then VoiceThread doesn't change any of that when you upload that presentation. So that would be another recommendation if you have a lot of slides, is to try it as a PDF instead. So now that I've added my media, I need to add my narration. And as I said, VoiceThread calls those comments. So here at the top, my comment is where I go to add comments. So when I click comment, VoiceThread starts my presentation at the first slide. 
And it's hard to see because it's a faint overlay, but at the bottom of my slide, there's a small semicircle and it has a plus in the middle. This is what I use to be able to add comments to this slide. When I click the plus, I have options for five different ways that I can add comments. If you have a microphone attached to your computer, you will most likely use the top option, which has the microphone yeah, icon. I lost this. How can I make the noise? Come here, help um, me. Hi, uh, Isan. I'm going to turn off your audio for right now. If you can't hear me, Dan, could you connect with him in the text chat? Thank you, Dan. So continuing with recording my, my audio here, as I said, I will demonstrate recording it via microphone, but to cover the other options, the first one at the lower left is adding a text comment. So this opens up a text editor where you can type in the comment that you wanted to make. The phone option lets you enter your telephone number so that VoiceThread calls you and allows you to record your narration then via telephone. At the far right, I have an option to add a webcam video comment. This lets me record video and audio at the same time over this slide. And then the bottom one here allows me to upload an audio file if I've recorded it in another platform. For example, if you used Audacity or a, maybe a recorder on your phone to get an MP3 file, you could upload that comment here instead. But I'm going to record one quickly live because, again, it's kind of the easiest and most straightforward way to do it if you have a, a microphone built into your laptop or a USB one. So I'm going to record the audio comment. I get a countdown, four, three, two, one. Hello, and welcome to Definitions of Evaluation. In this lesson, we will be looking at a couple of different ways that you would define evaluation and ways to conceptualize your evaluation project. So as an aside, this is not for the voice thread, but for the participants, now that I've done recording my a comment for this slide, I will click stop recording. When I do, voice thread will autoplay my comment back to me so that I can make sure it sounds the way that I want it to. So let me do that now. Three, two, one. Hello, and welcome to definitions of evaluation. In this lesson, we will be looking at a couple. So I'm going to go ahead and save it for now for the demo. Obviously, my countdown got caught in the audio. I would try doing that one again uh, by clicking cancel to go back and re-record. But I will click save. That will save that audio for this slide. Now I'm ready to move on to the next slide. And I do that by going to the arrows in the lower right corner, and that moves me on to the next slide in my presentation, at which point I do the same thing again. I click the plus, I choose the microphone, and I start my recording. The most commonly used definition of evaluation comes from Fitzpatrick et al. And defines evaluation as determining the worth or merit of an evaluation object based on defensible, defensible criteria to determine the object's value or merit. The most commonly used definition of, so there we go. Again, I've recorded audio now for a new slide. So Christine, yes, you would just hit record more if you wanted to add on to what you recorded. The great thing about uh, recording in VoiceThread like this is it is per slide. So if I come back and I need to change the audio on one slide, I can do that. Um, I'm not recording a lengthy uh, time period of 45 minutes or an hour and then finding that everything was lost. Uh, I can do that bit by bit. I also want to point out, Rob alluded to this before in the text chat uh, correctly about Christine's question with the, the slides. Um, in general, you'll want to limit these presentations to a very short length. Um, I might stretch it to 15, but I would honestly recommend five to 10 minutes at the most because students will drop off, they'll stop watching after uh, 
too long because it's just not um, the way that we consume media anymore. So I do recommend research has demonstrated that the shorter the presentation, the more likely your students are to watch it and the more likely they are to retain what they've learned. So another great tip would be, yes, having smaller presentations, but multiple of those presentations. Jeannie, you ask if there's a way to easily export only a handful of slides from an existing longer PowerPoint. Uh, yes, what I would do is select all of those slides, copy them, open a new PowerPoint, and then paste those in. So you can actually use that to create a portion of your PowerPoint as a separate file. And then, yes, you don't have to redo the entire thing. So in VoiceThread now, let's assume that I've recorded audio over all of my slides. When I'm done recording audio, I click the X in the upper right to close out of the recording process. At this point, I could rearrange my slides, I could add more slides, or I could edit the, the settings for the presentation overall. A lot of that is here under the options. Those playback settings, again, are right here. But if you look at the top, I've gone through step one to add media and step two to add a comment. And so now I'm ready for step three, which is sharing it back to my class. When I click the share with class button, I get to see a preview of the title and the created by. I have uh, all the information that I need to make it ready. And I click again to confirm share with class. So now I have a confirmation that my voice thread was shared and I can return to my course. Here within Blackboard, I could close the tab to go back out to my courses list or I can go back to my course using the breadcrumb at the top and then back to content. So again, here was my link to the voice thread and just as a quick demonstration, I can click the link it will launch the LTI, and now it will play the presentation that I had created. Three, two, one. Hello, and welcome. This is the exact same view that your students will see. And if you haven't edited the playback settings, your students will also have the ability to add a comment at this point by using these options here at the bottom, just like you did to add audio, text, a video, or call in via phone. One last thing that I would like to demonstrate before uh, switching back to uh, the slides and some Q&A is how you can build a graded voice thread. So if I go to build content and then voice thread graded, I get a different set of options. So I'm going to call this one um, student presentations. And I'll tell them to create a new voice thread for your presentation. Obviously, I would provide more instructions for students um, on how to go about doing that. Uh, but for right now, I will simply give them those, those brief and terse instructions. When I go to define this link for a graded voice thread, I get a different set of options. So now when I get my, my menu with the blue buttons to ask what I want this link to do, I will have a, vo a fourth option if I had done this correctly. Pardon me. It's always good to see small mistakes <laughs> to know that we make them too. So let me try this again. Graded presentation. We wait to be redirected. Hey, Stephanie. Yes. While we're waiting, Sarah had a good question. She um, recorded some videos. Excellent. Um, and it's basically the video is too large and she wants to do a voice over on the, the videos for lab experiment. And if it's too big for voice thread, I, you know, we're not going to be upgrading. Do you have any suggestions for, um, for Sarah regarding videos that are too large for voice thread where she can do a voiceover? Thanks. Yeah, no, thank you for asking that. So Sarah, I would first check that, um, to make sure that we have 
that you're connected to our system correctly, that you're going, if you're going through Blackboard. If you've created an account separately on VoiceThread for a free account, that might be part of the confusion. Um, but in the meantime, if you are doing it that way and you're still getting that, um, I would definitely look into a different, a different option. Um, Kaltura Capture might be a better solution for you. Um, or adding narration to the video in another way. Um, I would say follow up with us via email at least so that we can look into what the, the file limitation settings are and uh, what those, um, those requirements would be. So unfortunately, best laid plans, I am not getting the assignment builder the way that I should be. So I'm going to try to do a quick, um, did you enable the grading center? option? Oh, you know what? Thank you. Yeah. It's, Again, it's, it's this is why. That part. Yeah. Oh, simple mistakes. And again, it's a good lesson for everyone to see. Voice thread graded. Yeah, it's counter. It's counterintuitive, yeah. really, to be honest with you, because once you put it in graded, you would think, but you still have to go down and scroll and click enable evaluation. It, it Thank you, Rob. I appreciate that. Yes, so the no one else will forget since I have forgotten it twice. It's under the grading option to enable evaluation. That's what I forgot twice now. And I will not forget it again, and I doubt any of you will either. So once this launches, now fingers crossed, I have done it correctly, and I will be able to see the assignment builder. There it is, all that for one more button. So the assignment builder gives you additional options. You can create a graded voice thread that allows, or requires rather, students to create their own voice thread. It could require them to submit a comment on your voice thread, or it could require that they watch a voice thread in its entirety, in which case then students would receive credit for having watched the entire presentation, or they would receive credit for submitting the correct number of comments, or if they create a, cr a voice thread, if that's the option you select, they would create their presentation, share it to you and to the rest of the class, and then you can review their voice thread presentation and assign a grade within voice thread that is also automatically sent to the Blackboard Grade Center. So all of that to be able to show you that there are ways that voice thread can also integrate with grading. The last thing that I'll show you here, though, is I do want to show you in Blackboard Ultra course view how you go about adding a voice thread to your Ultra course. I'm going to add one to module one here. When I have my module open, I would click the plus sign in order to add content. And then I'm going to go to the content market. That opens a new panel with all of the tools that are integrated in Blackboard. At the bottom, there is the options here for VoiceThread or VoiceThread graded. We'll do a regular VoiceThread. When I click the plus sign, that adds the link to my course. And then again, once I click this link, it will launch VoiceThread and allow me to start the same process that I did from the original course view. So a slight distinction, in Ultra Course View for how you create that link. But then once you've gotten into VoiceThread, the process is entirely the same as what you've seen already. So I'm going to come back for a second because I want to connect and say and ask whether um, Jeannie, who asks, where can we find VoiceThread? Hopefully, I've answered that question now. Um, and everyone knows how to find voice thread in their Blackboard courses. Yes, excellent. I'm so glad to hear that. Uh, so then I think that is my demonstration. Let me go back to the slides quickly. Because I want to remind you, again, that we have resources on using VoiceThread as well as using a wealth of other tools available on our Keep Teaching website. Uh, Rob just shared a great uh, how-to uh, from VoiceThread on creating a VoiceThread. 
but I want to share we also have one for uh, that we created for you on creating VoiceThread to record narration over your slides. So I'll put that link in the text chat, but it's on the guides page of our Keep Teaching website as well. And then we will also be sure with the recording for this workshop that we also share the, the how-to guide that Rob did as well as some other resources that we have for you and for your students. And Stephanie, um, one of the things I wanted to bring up regarding the voice thread um, and, and their tutorial is the, the great thing about VoiceThread is that they have it geared strictly towards Blackboard. So you do, it, you're not just looking at different, you know, um, LMSs. And then they break it down further between student and teacher. So again, there's no reason for you to look at a general one. Now we have obviously the Blackboard up there too, but um, if you just go to the VoiceThread, they have these short little Vimeo videos I, I just basically put the thread um, and the link right in the instructions for the students um, to make it quote unquote idiot proof. Um, so that, that does kind of minimize the uh, the issues because you're gonna you're gonna find regardless of what you do, there's gonna be one or two students that are gonna have a, an issue, and so you just want to really be as thorough as possible. Thanks, Rob. And then, of course, we have additional opportunities. So if you wanted to meet with particularly Dan or Rob, our VoiceThread gurus, on using VoiceThread in your courses, you can schedule a one-on-one -on -one consultation via uh, online or via phone. And the link for that is go.niu.edu slash consultations. I'll put that in the text chat for quick reference. Or if you wanted to sign up for a different workshop this week, the schedule for that is available at go.niu.edu slash KT workshops. We have a few more scheduled for this week and we are working out what we may offer next week to support you as you begin your courses. Our consultations are also available next week, but right now we have, uh, we're making final decisions on what workshops we'll have available. With that, I'm going to go ahead and stop the recording and we'll hang around for any more questions that you have.